gentlemen. Brothers and sisters, it's time. Space in the mix. This is a journey into sound. Pump up the volume. I know you're gonna dig this. Space. Yeah, boy. Give me a funky ass bass line. My man throwing down. That's my man throwing down. Yo, what's up? What's up? What's up? We back again with another episode of the Bass Show. And tonight's guest, man, when we talk about the history of bass, we done traced it back to the beginning. We talking about the origins of the bass, right? We talking about the beginning, the genesis of the bass, man. When we talking, I guess tonight is a bass pioneer, not somebody who coined the phrase Miami bass, but somebody who loved music that had a lot of bass in it. Our night's, tonight's guest, man, no further ado, man, if you don't know, you got to be kind of slow, man. I guess tonight, MC A. <laughs> What they do, what they do. Blessing and an honor to have you with us tonight, man, on the bass show. Because when we talk about bass, you can't even say the word bass or the germ bass music without talking about MCADE. And it's an honor and a pleasure to have you with us tonight. Thank you, my brother. Yes, um, bass, you know, there was no bass before, you know, um, I started with my first record, which was Bass Rock Express. There was no bass music or Miami bass or none of that. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't a thing. Put it like that. Yes, sir. And I understand that you are originally from Miami, Florida, but your father, Mr. Hines, is uh, was in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Well, he lived in Miami, too, but he moved and he moved up to uh fort lauderdale i stayed in in uh miami with my mom you know where i was born and raised okay okay yeah. yes sir and and um speaking of your dad man talk to me a little bit about this record label right here foresight records uh my dad was the kind of person he was he was an entrepreneur and he would, you know, he have 50 different things going on at once, you know, um, you name it, he did it, all kind of businesses, all kind of things. And, you know, because he had record stores at the time, he had a record store um, in the Thunderbird uh, swap shop. Mm -hmm. And because he had that, he was selling, that was, that was like when Sugar Hill came out and, Sugar Hill, you know, it was hot at the time, and it was like nowhere else in, in the country, California, the, the Midwest, nowhere else was doing nothing, no hip hop or none of that, you know, and it was only coming out of New York. And like I mm -hmm. said, it was back you know, in the beginning with that Sugar Hill, and he was selling so many copies and stuff for that, till he was like, yo, this stuff selling like this i need to make a record and he was just like that he just get you know had no experience about doing anything and just got in his head like boom let me make a record you know and produce some of these you know these these rappers these kids what have you and that's what he did so now speaking of him producing these rappers and kids who was the first person that he put on record, and how did he come across those two people? I understand that you actually produced that record without knowing that you produced that record, but first talk to me about the two MCs and how did your dad even come about knowing them? That was Sexy Lady and MC Chief. See, I go by the name of the Chief, and like a box of ants, and I'm fast release. So don't just stand there in a daze. Listen to Sexy Lady, you'll be amazed. Bump, bump, fizz and fizz, I'm Sexy Lady, hey, what it is? Was a powwow in the Indian tribe. Everybody in the TV world feeling the vibes. Then the chief got up, he started to dance. So if you want to rock, this is your chance. So a dude jumped up, he did the smirk. He rocked the planet Mars and the planet Earth. He started to spin and he started to break. Cause so this like a DJ, I started to take. I grab a bow and arrow. My friend said, No, just take the mic and rock this show like this, y'all. Like that, y'all. I'm looking for the beef. Where's that, y'all? See, I've got the beef. Yes, indeed. And I know, homeboys, what you need. No other young ladies can't compare. And if you see my beef, 
stop and stare. So I'm spin on your back, spin on your head. I'm looking for the beef, I've got the bread. I'm cruising around in my new Maserati. If I didn't come to jam, no, I didn't come to play. And if you want to rock until the early light, somebody say, all right. Sexy lady was a chick, and she was she was sexy, and you know they would go out to because he also managed uh, one of the big daddies, you know, yeah. so one of the big daddies, the big daddies clubs and stuff like that. So he had all the, you know he knew all the women, all the chicks, and sexy lady was you know one of the bad girls, bad young girls, um, and he was like you know when I guess when he thought about making a record. He thought about he thought about the business part of it, where she had sex appeal, and then Jerome McCain, um, uh, another rapper uh, that that's also on our label. He he came uh, he gave him I guess they they talked it over, had some conversation, what have you, and he found Irvin, uh, MC Chief, and they put that together like that, you know. So MC Chief is where he is he credited for being one of the first rappers out of Florida? No, you know what I'm saying? It's like that is totally grazed over. You know, you hear a lot of talk, you know, like uh Luke Skywalker, like Luke rather, and you know, you know, and, and Luke, I I you know I, I don't like that part because you know, he sit up and he, you know, he'll say something out of his mouth. Like a lot of guys, they'll say, well, you know, people don't give respect and people don't do this and that. Well, you're doing the same thing. You understand what I'm saying? Because see, when you sit and tell bold faced lies that I was the first and I started it, this and that, that's a lie. Because basically, you know, we we sat down with Luke when he had that uh, first record um, with two live crew and he didn't know how to distribute or do anything and basically we was going to distribute the record we was uh going to do a deal with him to distribute the record because he didn't have a clue so we sat down with him in his mom house to talk about it you know to you know do some kind of deal i mean he went and found some other funding or what have you you know and did it but he was no way uh before us you know what i'm saying he was he was playing our music. He was fans of us. You dig right. what I'm saying? Yes, so, sir. you know, so to, to, to come back and tell the world, you know, and not respect and pay homage, you know what I'm saying? That, you know, hey, I wasn't the first. I learned from them. You understand what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. just like everybody else in Florida, in hip hop, you know, uh, we taught them the game. You dig? Because they, they saw Foresight do it. They saw us blowing it out the, the water with beef box. And then that ran throughout the country, through the Midwest, to Master P, Baby, and Jay Prince, and everybody else, all the way back up to Cali. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And it all started. And, I, and, 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 and I'm, I'm a real humble person, right? But it all started in my hometown, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. That's right. right? It really started called. in my hometown, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Right. And, and um, we, we had the honor of having producer Devastator on our show. King Devastator. Shout out King to Devastator. Devastator. Man. Okay. Uh, Devastator. In fact, I'm wearing Devastator shirt right here. Uh, so shout out to King Devastator. And um, King Devastator was on the show and, and uh, he said this. My brother, that my that's my ace coon fool. That's the what that we ride to the ties for. Man, man talk to me a little bit song. about ADE. MC ADE, bass mechanic. MC, hey, let me tell you. Hold on. Shout out to MC ADE, the legendary, the one and only legendary MC ADE, who actually started bass music. MC talk ADE about it. He got a record where he explaining bass to everybody. And he dropping mud, boy. That's the first bass record. Talk about That's it. The first bass record. Talk about it. Let it be known. I, I told you. I told you. It's uncut. This is real. It's uncut. Wait a minute. <laughs> so, so we had Devastator, and if you know Devastator personally, you know he's an animated guy. But he said on our show that MC ADE was the original. The first bass music, the first bass record, which was Bass Rock Express. Bass Rock Express. All aboard!
Bass Rock Express, man. Now, when I was coming up, when I was coming up in the city of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, there was these guys right here. Jam Pony Express. And there was these guys right here. CM Express DJs. And they will be bumping that Bass Rock Express playing, bumping it, playing back to back to back, man. Talk to me a little bit about Jam Pony Express, Lock Cool Jock, Slick Vic, and Long Live the Late Great Big Ace, man. Talk to me a little bit about those guys. Uh, Jam Pony Express, we go way back, man, because we were all young, and Jam Pony Express, um, even uh. You know, back when I guess they were doing their thing and and they started out or what have you, um, they basically they they were the DJs, you know, in the hood. Them and CM Express DJs, like you said, yes, you sir. know, yes, sir. Um, and Vic, you know, Lock Who Jock. Uh, back then, like Lock Who Jock, man, used to just rip the mic. You know what I'm saying? Lock Who Jock was yes. something serious on that. Shout out to Lock Who Jock, uh, man. Yeah, Shout out to Lock Who Jock. Yeah, Lock, y'all, Lock wasn't having it. And so, and then you had Big Ace, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, Big Ace would, you know, do his thing. Who's that DJ? Hi, you know, and, and and Vic was, you know, uh, really like the the, the the mix and the turntable guy, you know. Uh, mix used to um, Vic used to come up to the, the 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 record store, and we'd be in the back late nights so or what have you, scratching and going through. And um, you know, Big Ace used to come by the crib, and we we just, you know, we we kind of what happened, I guess, back then because with them doing you know playing the music they they were part of making that music real hot as well yeah. and they took the moniker from like bass rock express because they they use like jam pony express yes. yeah, and yeah, so yeah, we kind of yeah, built yeah. each other you know what i'm saying yes, it, it yeah, was, you know yeah. it was good you know yes and that and like you said that was a thing um in fort lauderdale you know you had jam pony express sim Express, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was, uh, um, CM, not to cut you off, but CM was the reason we did Bass Rock Express, okay? Okay, because what happened, CM had this record, um, it was like a Trans Europe Express record, it was like some kind of copy or something that, um, it had this loud horn used to come on. Everybody wanted that record. They would come to the record store and they would like, you know, and ask my dad, yo, this record that CM plays, where, where can we get it? This and that. And he tried, he tried, he tried, and he could never get this record. And CM wouldn't tell nobody where they got the record from. So yeah. what he did, that's when he stepped to me and he was like, yo, why don't you make a record? And I was like, okay. And he was like, we need to make one like this train thing they looking for and such, such, such. And that's how Bass Rock Express came along. And again, like you said, Bass Rock Express. And another thing that uh, Devastator said during his interview was your dad wasn't afraid to use samples. No. And we see that like in the Bass Rock Express, it starts off with a with a sample. from the TV show Green Acres. Yeah, well, how that happened was because 
my dad, he he uh when we did Beef Box, which was our first record uh on Foresight, um, he came up with it was that Wendy's commercial back then called Where's you know when where's they did the Where's the Beef. The beef. Hey, where's the beef? I don't think there's anybody back there. You want something better. You're Wendy's kind of people. And he had that idea, like, using that, you know, that moniker of, of where's the beef. So when it came around to doing Bass Rock Express, I kind of just imitated what he did and thought, of, you know, and that was like one of my favorite shows on TV was Green Acres. So I was like just imitating him. And I was like, oh, I can use Green Acres. You know what I'm saying? And boom. And yeah, that was that ingenious. Happened. That was ingenious. Not to get too much off of the the the, the rap side, but Devastator also said this when he was on the show. But then Shadi, yeah, and Man with the Fort the uh, Fort Lauderdale Foresight Records. Billy Hines, Billy M-C-A-D-E. Hines, A D E. Yeah, Billy Hines. That's the president. That's my homie. He he the first one who had Usher. Mm. Mm. The first one to have Usher. Do you remember that? Do you remember a young Usher being coming around the studio? Yeah, mm-hmm. Usher remember it too. Uh yeah. We, <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, we, we, we had Shadi. Uh Shadi was in Atlanta and I guess he was trying to, you know, get a deal or what have you, and um then uh gigolo was up there doing a show because he was that was at the time I, he did parents of roxanne him and lacy lace yo hey jerome yeah man that look like the parents of roxanne boy they look mad with them wrinkles in his forehead and they was up there doing a show and shadi seen the manager vanis lopez at the at the at the concert or what have you and he was like yo you know listen to my demo you know that type of thing and she she was like okay um he was good or maybe he was on the show i i, I don't really know the particulars but she came back and told my dad about him and was like he's a real good rapper this and that so we brought him down and put some of the foresight sauce on him and put that pink panther on him my dad came up with that was like you know yo let's do that you know that theme again this beat is fresh word and uh boom and shadi blue you know um far as Usher, uh, my dad uh, mm-hmm. knew uh, the, the, their manager out of Tennessee. And he had like these five five uh, boys. It was in, and Usher was one of them. Uh, it was another uh, uh, little boy named Adrian, who was the lead singer. But, you know, he brought him down. He, you know, paid for him to come down and we groomed him and did projects on them and 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 you know got you know the album and everything ready to go we were doing a you know a whole project on them we was training them like all that stuff that usher was uh doing and flipping and all that usher was trained before he ever got to it you know like baby face them and all of that he was already trained they used to get up like the manager have them get up every morning you know five o'clock in the morning they go running they come back they do their homework it was just a whole routine you know what i'm saying he was like well groomed and we we sent him because he you know he wanted to see his mom and his mom she had moved and moved to um atlanta you know and so she was you know living her new life or what have you you know because he was living in tennessee you know, up by his dad and his mom was down in Atlanta. But then, you know, when he got here and he was talking to his mom and he was, you know, kid, you know, they want to see their mom, their parent. And it was like, yo, um, well, so the manager was like, you know, step to my dad, say, man, to bring his morale up, you know, can you, you know, send him to see his mom, you know, and 
you know, and, and then let him come back. And then we, you know, we get back to work, you know, just sit him there for a couple of days. So, uh, so we did. So my dad, you know, paid for him, you know, to go up there to see his mom and, and unfortunately gave him some of the, the, the songs and stuff to show his mom what he's doing, this and that got up there, uh, some kind of way. I don't know. She took him to a showcase, a baby face showcase or something, they mm-hmm. saw him and then they were like, you know, uh, we want him. And she was like, well, he's with a group. And it was like, nah, we don't want the group. We just mm-hmm. want him. And next thing you know, his mom sent us a cease and desist letter saying he's no longer in the group. And it was, you know, some some dirty things played, you know what I'm saying? And dirty pool. And that's how that happened. Wow. Wow. Now, you mentioned a name when you was talking you mentioned the name. You just glossed over the name. I got to bring it up, being somebody from Parkway. You brought up a name, Gigolo Tony. Talk to me about the one and only yeah. Gigolo Tony, man. Talk to me. Gigolo Tony, you know, the one and only, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Gigolo, like I said, he's, he started out with us, and he was doing uh, Parents of Roxanne. And... You know, Gigolo Tony was one of a kind. You know, Gigolo, <laughs> would, <laughs> Gigolo, <laughs> Gigolo was doing shows. You know, and the the, the the ladies loved Gigolo, and Gigolo did his thing. You know, Gigolo was notorious. You know what I'm saying? He carried yes, his sir. name well. Oh and, man, uh, neighborhood yeah. hero, man. I'm from Parkway. Yeah. He was a neighborhood hero. He come through with the freshest cars, man. He was he was cool. He jump out and get a little kids dab and talk to us when we be at the church park. Shout out to the church park. I know they call it something else now, St. George. We call it the church mm-hmm. park. You know what I'm saying? I, we call it Parkway. We old school. We call it Parkway. But Gigolo Tony, he even had Parkway records. And I remember as a kid, Always trying to get on Parkway Records. I'm telling, hey, man, let me on. I'm from Parkway. Why I can't be on Parkway Records? I'm from Parkway. And uh, <laughs> he was just, I was young and, and I wasn't ready. But, man, shout out to Gigolo Tony, man. Um, another legend in the bass game. Another, um, and like I said, from where I'm from, a true legend. True legend, Gigolo Tony. Yeah, yeah real tall. Gigolo still doing his thing, you know what I'm saying? Um like I said, I, you know, it was a couple months ago I was talking to him. He was buying a Maserati. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, you know, Gigolo's still doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Shout out to Gigolo Tony, the one and only, man. There yes, is sir. no other, man. And like he said, if y'all didn't catch that, Gigolo Tony was doing a song called The Parents of Roxanne, just to let you know how far back they go. When yeah. Roxanne and Shantae came out and they was going back and forth, they Foresight Records was there. And they was making yeah. records at that same exact time when Roxanne and Shantae was out. So just again, giving a shout out to Foresight Records. You can look and see the catalog is deep. It goes all the way from like maybe 84 to, to 96, like a good 10 years straight of dropping yeah. not singles, not only singles, but full albums. Yeah, yeah, Full real albums. Time. And Gigolo had that that hit single uh, also uh Smurf Rock. Smurf you know, Rock that was yeah. off of Foresight Records. Yes, yeah. sir. Where they real took the, they took uh what was it? The Smurf. That's yeah. right. They took yeah. it from the Smurf. So again, like like Devastator was saying, uh, Mr. Hines wasn't scared about uh, using no. those samples at all. No, no, not at all. La, 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 la. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. But um, moving on, I know that the the saga continues. Foresight Records still continue, and it goes on with your daughter. And now you have a daughter that's carrying the Foresight name and also doing some music. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, I've been uh, producing my daughter, doing stuff on her. Um, yeah, my daughter, she's, you know, she's she's a good lyricist. Um, she's very talented. And I guess I, I really didn't even know how talented she was to one day she kind of like, you know, just said, Dad, I want to make a record. And I'm like, you tripping. But 
Um, <laughs> you know, and then she started, you know, spitting some stuff for me and letting me hear what she had. And I never even knew, you know, and and I know talent and she's really talented. You know what I'm saying? And not just because it's my daughter, because, you know, I'd be the first one to say, nah, baby, I love you, but um, let's try something else. But she really has some skills, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's that's what's up with that. And we we getting, you know, uh, like I say, everything is, you know, coming the climate with this this whole, you know, this mess. But, um, you know, we, we'll be back in it, man. We'll be back in it. Yes, sir. And not only that, you are the pioneer, the genesis, the beginning of this bass thing. Um, a, a artist, a performer that performs all over the world. Uh, we know the bass um, germ is very popular overseas a lot more than maybe than it is here in the States. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that international travel and the, the international crowd, so to speak. Crazy. Crazy. Um, you know, I was doing shows, you know, overseas, man. And, you know, I would be the only person performing. And I'm talking about, you know, soccer stadiums. And I'm talking mm-hmm. pack field, doing four shows a night you know, and, you know, me selling out stadiums, you understand, Mm -hmm. you know, like football, soccer stadiums, you know, crazy, crazy crowds. And hear these people, you know, like, especially in Brazil, they couldn't even speak English, but they knew every word to my songs, you know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And they would sing them and the love is just crazy, you know what I'm saying? With even you know, murals that they done of me, you know, um, even like, you know, I didn't even know here in Miami, you know, uh, somebody had told me, I, I, I finally, I seen it, but they did a, a nice mural, you know, um, uh, you know, so, but over in Brazil, it is, uh, it's, it's crazy. And like in Germany and, All over there, it's just a lot of respect, you know what I'm saying? Because they realize, you know, what started this, that whole culture, you know, that whole genre of music. And, you know, it's just basically like that's, that's Florida. 